Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, I want to have a look at how to use NURBS to model uh, more complex shapes uh, or sort of smooth form shapes uh, from reference images. So, even if we're kind of not too keen on using NURBS because we want to be able to actually uh, work with that shape in a more flexible manner um, using polygon modeling. Or, or we need to use polygons to go into our render pipeline or production pipeline. And um, initially, kind of using uh, creating a form in NURBS can be the most effective way of creating a, a shape, uh, even if we actually convert it into polygons later. So I just want to have a look at you know where you know a, an example of where NURBS can be quite effective, uh, which is kind of trying to bring in quite a simple, smooth shape. Uh, uh, into our um, scene uh, using a reference image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a NURB surface uh, just to follow the top surface of this chair, okay? Um, and, and I could use, uh, yeah, just to create the top surface of this chair, okay? So my strategy is going to be I'm going to create um, three curves uh, for this chair uh, one at this edge and one at this edge and one in the middle, okay? And the curves are going to follow uh, this profile, okay? Uh, and then I'm just going to go and uh, loft that, okay? So I'm going to just do a profile across the top of this chair here, okay? Great. Okay, so um, I'm going to go uh, into like a two-up view to do this so, uh, so that I can see the front and the right of the chair. So I'm just going to go into... Um, layouts side by side and then we've got our front view here I want my side view here so I'm just going to go panels orthographic side to get the side view okay so it is important to kind of set up your views and things to kind of help you out and model in the most effective way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this uh, I'm going to do the middle one in fact no I'm going to do the side one first okay so uh, what I'm going to do is go create and I'm going to use um, so I'm going to create some CV curves and then I'm going to loft across those curves. So I'm going to go into the Curves tool and go CV Curve, okay? And then all I'm going to do is just create a curve uh, that's following this profile here. Now, what I want to think about is um, I want to be consistent about where I'm putting these curves, okay, in relation to the surface. So I need to put the curves in a consistent manner in the middle and the uh, right hand uh, curve as well okay so we need a little bit of thought into this at this stage okay so I'm gonna kinda go um, I don't know I think I'm gonna go like every four here so I'm gonna go on the fourth one down uh, fourth one down um, I'm having to make a kinda guess at this point where this curve is okay um, and in fact I'm actually thinking that the best profile now that I've done this, I'm going to go escape because I think the best profile would be to you uh, would be to use this profile instead uh, to do our model. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is base it on this profile. Okay, so so I'm going to go and create another curve. So rather than trying to model from here to start with, I'm going to model from this uh, view to start with. Okay, so I'm going to sort of pick out this as our corner here. Uh, it's not 100% clear where the corner is, but I'm going to do that. There we are. We can zoom in on this as well, just to kind of help us out. Uh, go sort of every three. I think this is much better because I, can, I get a much clearer idea of where the, to position all the CV points. So I'm just going to initially position all our CV points along here. Okay. Um, I'm not going to model it massively accurately at this stage. I'm going to put a few extra just slightly denser at the end here, uh, massively accurately at this stage, um, and I'm going to accept that. Now obviously I've put the CV points in, and, and, and as you will know, um, what happens is the curve smooths through the CV points, so it doesn't follow through the CV points exactly, um, and that's the nature of uh, CV curves. So what I'm going to want to do is go right click and go uh, Control Vertex, and then just grab these vertexes and use the Move tool here, just to move these vertexes around in order for us to be able to actually, and I want to try and avoid moving them laterally, but I might have to move them a little bit. Uh, let's have a look how. Control vertex, move them around to give us this curve here. Okay, so just a little bit of movement there. 
move that in. Again. Sorry, control vertex. Here we go. What I should also say as well is, is I have treated these uh, uh, this reference image a little bit, so I put it into Photoshop, and I purposely put it onto a slightly grey background, uh, and then lined them up over the top of each other in Photoshop to make sure that these would be useful orthogonal images. And the reason why um, I put it on a slightly grey background is because this blue is quite light. It doesn't contrast very well with a pure white background. Now, I could go into the settings in Maya and change the colour of these uh, the, the, the wireframe. Uh, that's that's another option to keep that contrast. Uh, I've just chosen to um, just put a bit of grey on the background of my uh, reference image. So that's my um, uh, side image here. Now what you'll notice in this profile is that the curve is exactly in the middle of the chair. So clearly what we need to do is move these CV points. Um, so while we've got it correct in, in, in this axis, that's the Z axis, and the y-axis, uh, we haven't got the position of the curves correct in uh, the x-axis. So we need to move it in this one axis here. Okay. So what I can do is I might just start by uh, selecting the whole curve. Uh, hopefully it will let me do that. If I can just select the curve here. I might need to just select it in this view here. Hang on, go into object mode. Sorry, my computer was having a little bit of a, a stall at that point. Yeah, I've got that selected. Sorry, I've got it selected. I just needed to put the move tool on there. Okay. Uh, and then what I want to do is just move this curve along. Uh, so obviously at the moment it's just a straight line. I'm just going to move it at least to the, the edge here to line up this first CV point. And then if I just go to control vertexes, what I can do is just select each of these vertexes and just move it in. I don't want to move it up and down. So I just want to use, notice how I tend to use the arrows to move it rather than moving it uh, both axes at the same time. I find I have more control if I just move the one axis at a time. Okay. Now, it can get a bit confusing which point I'm selecting in this front view because uh, you can't really clearly see which one's which. So what you can do is select the control vertex in this view. So for example, if I select it in this view and then move it in this view. So you can see how you can use the um, the front and right views, uh, sorry, the front and side views together uh, to give you that control. So it's all about just having that control over uh, what we're doing. Okay. Uh, sorry, it wasn't quite letting me select that point there because the uh, manipulator arm, it thinks I'm selecting the manipulator arm here. So I just need to select this point and then go back. Again, I could make this manipulator arm, uh, the manipulators here smaller. I go into the my settings and do that. Um, if I wanted to as well. It's always useful sort of being aware that you can make lots of adjustments in the Maya interface to kind of help you uh, do what you need to do. I think I need to kind of come back out again because this chair is going to come back out again to this corner here, isn't it? So I need to kind of come back out again and see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got this point here. Um, now it does seem to me that I've got this point a little bit too far uh, out here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just move that up a little bit and um, they don't quite marry up so I'm going to have to just sort of find eyeball this a little bit and, and kind of make a compromise it's just where I've lined up the reference images they're not 100% uh, spot on so um, that's my uh, CV points done what I'm going to do is just move that out a little bit more I think uh, like so and again just select this point here and let's just see where we are with this point here so that looks about right now what I might want to do is just go into the perspective view just have a look at this curve and just kind of go is this the sort of shape that I'm expecting okay so I'm looking at that and going okay that seems to be kind of the shape that I'd be getting from that chair again if if I had the chair and I had more photographic references I could then kind of check that curve against it so it's worth just at this point looking in the perspective view just to get the sort of check the general form of the curve okay so now what I'm going to do is draw my uh, middle line here and I'm going to do the same thing okay so I'm just literally going to draw it uh, and again what I'm going to do is 
Yeah, so for the middle curve, obviously it dips in the middle. So I'm going to follow this back line here, okay, for this middle curve. And um, the key thing is when I'm creating this curve, what I need to do is make sure that the CV points are in a similar place. Now, one strategy I could do is literally copy this line. And in fact, I might just do that. That might just be a starting point. No, I'm not going to do that because I want... I want it to be a perfectly straight line, so rather than having to noodle all these points and snap them to grid and get them in a straight line, I think it'll be easier just for me to create a new curve, okay? So, let's go into this view here. I'm going to go uh, Create, Curve Tools, CV Curves, uh, and the key thing is that I put, my, I put my vertexes in a similar position to the vertexes on this line, okay? Now, uh, Maya has just kindly uh, switched those off for me. I'm going to just try and see if I can uh, keep those uh, uh, viewable. So what we can do is we can, if we go into uh, Modify, sorry, Display, NURBS, and click CVs, uh, what that'll do is it'll make sure that the CVs are permanently visible for us um, as we, uh, even when I'm creating another curve. So you can see here that the CVs are permanently visible. Um, one of the other things I've done as well is um, uh, turn the, uh, turn the nerves uh, into a, a red uh, because the dark blue that I initially work with that, that is the default in there, again, doesn't contrast very well with the black. And so I did that by going into uh, Windows, Preferences, uh, Color Settings. And again, it is, I, I know it kind of reinforces, it is useful to optimize Maya, the viewing in Maya, to, to help you uh, do your modeling uh, effectively. So uh, I go into this Inactive tab. So this is when you have an item not selected. And if you twirl down, so I'll just twirl these back up again. So you should end up with something like this. You click on the Inactive tab. If you go into uh, Objects, and you've got nerves curves here, you can see I've changed the color here. I'll just change that here, look, and you can see that's changing to green. So you can see how I can change the color of that uh, to help me see that curve um, over uh, the black background there, okay? So that's another tip that you can use. Okay, so let's go back into creating our CV curve, okay? So again, I'm just gonna put the control points in a similar, uh, position along this curve as they are along this curve okay and um, so I'm going to match it up and obviously I've got this grid here to help me you might not be so lucky uh, but obviously that just helps me for the purpose of this tutorial to really sort of demonstrate the point point. you want these CV points to kind of line up as you go along and um, okay so I'm going to put this one about here uh, there and I might end up having to add an extra CV point here uh, but we see how we go we'll move them around And again, we need to close the curve as well. So I'm probably going to go and put this CV point here. And uh, and what I want to do is I, I, I want the, uh, do I need to see? No, I don't need to do that. In fact, I'm just going to put that down to here. Okay, fine. Uh, excellent. Okay, so there, there we are. Yeah, we don't need to close this curve because we're lofting. Okay, right. Um, Okay, so the key thing is that we have the same number of CV points in similar positions on both curves, okay? Uh, otherwise, the, the, the process won't work. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the CV points here. I'm going to go right-click and go Control Vertexes, and I'm going to just refine the position of some of these vertexes, especially around here, to kind of make sure this is right. Um, I think I want to turn the hole off if I can. I can't, that's not a problem. Okay. Let's try that again. I was going to select them. That's it. I just need to select the move tool. Okay, now it's all working for me. So I'm just going to refine where these points are. That's fine. So that's working quite well. I just need to move this CV point down a little bit in order to get this curve that I want here. And then move that up a little bit. Okay, excellent. And then this one I'm going to just move in a touch. Again, I might have to move that up just to help me get the shape of the line that I want because this got a bit more of a curve in there. Okay, um, I did if I do this again, I might actually add another CV point in there, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to leave that as it is. Okay, so now let's go to our front view. 
Uh, so perspective, sorry, orthographic front view. Okay, so um, with this selected, uh, what I'm going to do is I want to uh, move. Uh, so you can see that the CV curve is kind of way off to the, to the side here. What I want to do is put this CV curve in the middle of this chair. Now, if I count these across, I think what we'll find is that the uh, the actual middle of the chair is in the middle of this, um, sorry, in the middle of this uh, uh, set of cubes here, or, or, or yeah, in the middle of this uh, grid bit here. Uh, and I want these CV curves to be just in a straight line as well, okay? In fact, sorry, I, I hadn't actually grabbed the uh, curve, I grabbed the uh, uh, reference image, which is not what I wanted. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, go back and just select the curve. Okay, here we go. And then go back into our front view. That makes much more sense where it is now. Okay, go back into our front view. Uh, now, I wonder if our, yeah, that's fine. So now what I want to do is a similar position, line up this curve here. And the key thing is, I don't really want to mess with any of these lines. I want that to just be a straight line, okay? So again, I'm just going to go back into my perspective view. Just check that that kind of looks right, okay? So to me, that's kind of looking right. It's going to give me the form of the chair that I want, okay? Great, okay? So now, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, rather than build a separate curve here, what I'm going to do is mirror this curve, okay? So again, if I just go into object mode and just select both of these curves, okay? And then I'm going to use, um, I'm going to group them. Uh, so I'm just going to go edit uh, group, okay? And, um, and, and if you ever need to access that group, then you can do that through the outliner. Um, so here we have my group and the two curves that I created in that group, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this group, okay? Um, so I'm going to go edit. I'm not going to use the just control D. I'm going to use duplicate special, and I want to click on the options because what I want to do is not just duplicate it, but actually just mirror it uh, in this axis. So this axis, if we look down here, is the X axis, okay? And I just want to mirror it uh, in the X axis. So if I put in minus... Um, minus one, what will happen is it will mirror this in the X axis for me, okay? So if I go duplicate special now, okay, what you'll find is, is it's duplicated it for me, okay, and mirrored it in the X axis, okay? Um, now, it hasn't copied it exactly correctly, and uh, the reason for that is because the anchor uh, for this group is actually, you know, slightly between the curves. And so you can kind of see it's duplicated it around this anchor. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go Control-Z to undo that action. I'm going to move the anchor and then repeat the action, okay? So in order to move the anchor, I want to move the anchor onto, so it's in line with one of the control points along this curve. So it's in line with the curve. With, with, uh, with the curve. So the easiest way to do that is to align it with one of the control points, okay? So if I select um, this icon here to snap it to the control points, okay? And then what I'm going to do is hold down D. So I'm going to hold down the D key and you can see that the, uh, the, the anchor changes when I do that. So I'm going to hold down the D key and then just click on this arrow and hold it and go over this line. OK, and it's going to snap to where that line is. It's going to be parallel to that line. OK, I don't need it on the line. I just need it uh, parallel to this line uh, 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 or over the top of this line in the X axis. OK, so now if I go apply, you'll see that it's duplicated it perfectly uh, uh, for me. So let's have a look in the front view form uh, and see how this has worked. So if I go panels perspective, sorry, orthographic front, you can see. Yeah, so now it's duplicated that and that's perfect. Great. So I'm happy with those curves. All we need to do now is uh, loft those curves uh, to create this uh, chair. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is just go into my perspectives and what I'm going to do is just select the curves. So uh, I do need to make sure I'm in object mode to do this. I think I, I am in object mode uh, again. Uh, the fact that I've got the CVs turned on does make it a little bit confusing as to whether object mode is selected or not selected. Um, obviously, one of the things to be aware of is I do actually have a duplicate of this middle curve. Obviously, I needed to duplicate that in order to kind of make the mirror work. Or, to be fair, I could have just duplicated this. I could have just moved the anchor point of this curve 
to that line and then just duplicated the curve on its own and I would have got the same result. So I didn't necessarily need to actually do the grouping uh, in order to do this. But what I want to do is just delete one of these curves and what I might do just for neatness is just reorganize, get rid of the groups just by middle dragging on this outliner. So again, if you're wondering what I'm looking at here, that's the Windows outliner to get to get this window. And I can go middle drag and move it out. So it's going to move all these curves out just because we don't really need to keep these groups. It was just there to help me do the, the duplicate. Okay, so there we are. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is select these curves. Uh, and they're all in nice order, actually. Yeah, so select these curves and do a loft. I could have done the loft anyway, but it just means that I'm keeping my scene nice and neat this way. And that's really important to do as well. Okay, so I'm going to go surfaces. And I'm just going to click loft, okay? And you'll see that we've lofted this surface here, and that's a really kind of good form uh, of this seat, and it's a good kind of shape of this seat. And again, I can check that against my reference images. So I'm just going to go uh, panel orthographic front. I'm just going to minimize the object view. Now, if I check that against my references, that's great. This is just the seat cover here, and I'm really kind of happy how that's coming together. Um, uh, yeah, I'm really happy how that's coming together. Uh, and if I go back into the perspective view, let's have a look at that. Yes. So I've got a nice natural form there. And again, I could convert that into uh, NURBS and continue working with that as well. Um, if I wanted to and I wanted more control over this form, uh, what I could do is I could control, I could create CV curves going across the chair. Okay. Um, I could create CV curves going across the chair. And especially at the front here, you know, that's kind of very straight and that doesn't quite look right. Uh, and maybe you could argue that uh, I, I think the top's OK, but the front's kind of a bit straight here. Um, so I might I may not be 100 percent happy with that. So what I could do is um, I could create some uh, CV curves going across the chair here to kind of define the form going across the chair uh, and then use by rails um, to actually um, uh, use. So I'd use these these curves here as rails. OK, and then use these uh, uh, curves going across the chair as um, projections going across the uh, uh, forms to project across the rail. OK, uh, and you can look at by rails in more detail, but that'd be a way of creating this with more control. OK, uh, using by rails.